Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we have our session, panel session, talking about multi-cluster, multi-Kubernetes cluster networking, mesh and application orchestration in an open source way. We have representative stakeholders um, from the Linux Foundation projects. Uh, they're gonna talk about this subject today and go into an example open source project that we're all involved in. My name is Bob Monkman, I work for Intel and I am uh, part of the Linux Foundation community involved in a number of projects, including one of the projects, MCO, that we're gonna talk about today. And uh, I'm also an open source, um, you know, marketing and strategy person for Intel. And uh, so I'm gonna like to have everyone on the panel, please introduce themselves, starting with you, Robbie, let's go down the line here, top to bottom. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Ravi Chinduru, Associate Fellow at uh, Verizon. My key focus is uh, helping um, to build Mac solutions in partnership with uh, ISV and uh, SA partners, uh, and also designing and orchestrating Mac solutions uh, that uh, uses both partner and uh, Verizon services. I'm also a member of uh, Linux Foundation MCO project. Uh, uh, I, I, I became the TSC uh, member uh, very recently, and this is the subject of this panel today. Arun. Hey folks, um, this is Arun Rajgopal here. I'm with uh, Reliance Geo. I am um, responsible for technology development for enterprise and, and cloud uh, services at Geo. And I've previously been involved in a, um, a few open source projects, you know, that have, um, you know, further the cost of, you know, how service providers adapt and adopt and uh, enhance, um, you know, open source applications and uh, use it for their benefit. Um, so I'm happy to be involved uh, in some way with this open source project here as well. Um, and happy to join this panel uh, with the rest of the distinguished uh, panelists. Thank you, Arun Amar. Thank you, Bob. Uh, my name is Amar Kapadia. I'm a co-founder at a startup called Arna Networks. We are a software company working on orchestration and management for 5G network services and edge computing applications. I'm uh, an active Linux Foundation community member, have been for several years. And the main projects that I'm involved with are Emco, ONAP, uh, Anukit, and Magma. And it's a pleasure to be on this panel today. Thank you, Omar. And last but not least, Kathy. Hi, my name is Kathy Zhang. I'm a senior principal engineer at on Central Software Engineering team of uh, Intel. Um, my concentration areas are Kubernetes, uh, serverless, and edge computing. So I'm a TSC, TSC member of this uh, core project, which is uh, which will be a Linux open source project. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I think I'd like to start off with really just let's level set on when we talk about multi-cluster orchestration um, and the need for you know, G, you know managing network services across geo distributed. Uh, locations. What are we really talking about? And Mark, could you tee that up and then we'll talk a little bit about use cases? Yes, absolutely. What we are seeing with edge computing is a new concept called composite applications. And what a composite application is, is it's a application that is made up of other applications underneath. And each of these applications could then have their own, you know, microservices, multiple microservices as well. And the interesting thing about these composite applications is that they're not deployed on one site. They're meant to be deployed across multiple sites. They can be multiple edge sites. They can be edge to public clouds. And let's take some examples. So 5G is, is a great example. So even in 5G, let's take the RAN, for example, the radio area network, where you have different applications for the RAN composite application. And these sub-applications may be a distributed unit DU, a central unit CU, the uh, radio intelligent controller, the RIC, there may be some associated databases. And all of these make up the RAN, 5G RAN uh, composite application. And these components can be orchestrated in different places. Same thing goes for say Azure IoT or Amazon Greengrass applications. 
There's a piece that runs on the edge. There's a piece that runs on the public cloud. And the list goes on. There's a whole range of edge computing applications with the same attributes, such as analytics, AR, VR, SD-WAN, and more. And now we have to worry about two things, and I'm sure the others on this panel will get into that, is first is, where do you distribute these applications? In some cases, it's the edge. Some cases, it's edge and core. Some cases, it's edge and public cloud, a mix. And the second is, how do we distribute these applications? And the decision making can be based on parameters such as cost, performance, reliability, platform capabilities as well. Very good. Let's talk, thank you for that, that overview. And that made a lot of sense. Um, it's, it sounds like a complicated problem. Um, let's talk a little bit about use cases. Ravi, um, in your sphere, um, what kind of use cases uh, can you tell us about where this would apply? Sure, Bob. So working with our uh, SI and ISV partners, we can clearly call it out that uh, Kubernetes and containers are the de facto model for building uh, new Mac applications. Coming to the use cases, there are several use cases like smart warehouse, smart manufacturing, um, cashierless store to name a few. So let us pick the cashierless store that uses uh, 5G public Mac. The customer uses the retailer's uh, mobile app to authenticate and enter the store. This mobile app connects to an uh, application running say in the public cloud, and it need not be the same cloud provider as in the public Mac. So as this customer, fix the items from the shelves, the cameras and other IoT sensors, stream the data, say like a computer vision application running in the public Mac that is in the carrier network. So these apps process this, uh, the stream coming from cameras and IoT devices, identifies the picked up items and send the data to a billing app running in the enterprise data center. Then the payment is processed and the receipt is generated. As you have observed for this use case, we need to bring up clusters, Kubernetes clusters in different clouds, public Mac, public cloud, and even in the enterprise data centers. The traffic between the applications, which has been traditionally within the data center is now on the van, of course, which needs to be secure. So from this use case, uh, or uh, all these Mac use cases, there is a need for an orchestrator that is cloud agnostic, can manage multiple Kubernetes clusters, across different types of clouds and takes care of uh, deploying the applications, both the 5G core, as well as the Mac applications, even taking care of the network, network functions, and uh, going with a flexible and highly available uh, deployment models. And in the last, and but not the least, securing the connectivity between the clouds. Rod, uh, very good. Thank you. That was a pretty interesting use case. And, and uh, but I, I imagine uh, that MCO is not limited just to you know five G telco use cases. Uh, Arun, uh, other other sectors, can you talk about, please? Arun, you are muted. My bad. That's yeah. okay. No, oh, it, it's. Um... It happens, right? So, um, so yeah, like Ravi said, you know, there are um, lots of different use cases that are uh, that uh, that lend themselves uh, very well to um, orchestration with a very intelligent, capable uh, multi-cluster or orchestrator like Emco. So, uh, so five G is a very um, um, you know very popular use case. That everybody, every operator, every major operator across all the ge geographies are. Are working on, but it is not just limited to uh, the wireless or um, IoT type of use cases, right? There are a lot of other enterprise type use cases that are of uh, significant interest to um, carriers and operators across the world uh, that I think would lend themselves very well to um, orchestrating using an intelligent orchestrator like Emco. I can think of SASE as a it's a, it's a you know it's a very overused um, hyper leveraged term these days you know secure access um, you know ser service edge right so the, uh, the the SASE use cases where you have distributed uh, gateways that need to be deployed in cloud environments typically service provider cloud environments you know private cloud type environments across the service provider uh, network footprint. 
and how you turn them up, how you orchestrate the deployment of that with other enterprise services that need to be delivered to enterprise customers. How do you tie that back into other app, telco applications and services that the service provider is offering to probably the same customer. So, so you have a wide variety of um, um, enterprise use cases that you could uh, target using a multi-cluster um, orchestrator like um, like what we're going to be describing here. So, so the, the the point is, you know, we need um, you know we need to have these applications distributed, like Ravi was describing earlier, right? Not just in, um, in, in a single location or in a single large data centers or just a cluster of data centers, they need to be deployed out to the edge of the network, the far edge of the service provider, provider network. It could also be deployed in public cloud locations. So kind of taking all of these use cases um, uh, specifically targeted towards um, enterprise customers and kind of integrating that with other services that the service provider is offering to enterprise customers is is rich for um, uh, for um, you know um, for picking here, right? In terms of how we can use intelligent multi-cluster orchestrators to uh, to target that space. Very good, thank you for that. And, and um, so, with these different kinds of use cases. Um, you know, one of the projects that we're involved in to address these issues is is the MCO project, which which is uh, stands for the Edge Multi Cluster Orchestrator. Kathy, can you tell us? Uh, just give us an overview. Uh, I've got a slide that you prepared as well. Uh, you know, what is what is MCO, and uh, you know, tell us a little bit about you know its capabilities and its and its architecture. Okay, yeah. So MCOR is a geo-distributed application orchestrator that intelligently places a complicated workload onto one or more clusters. The clusters that the workload is placed can be a public cloud cluster or enterprises private cloud cluster or, or IoT edge site cluster. The workload can be a complicated application that is composed of multiple simple applications, or it can be just a simple application, or it can be a network function. And these apps or functions can be in the form of container or virtual machine. It provides a self-service portal and a one-click deployment of complex applications and network functions across one or more uh, Kubernetes clusters. It auto configures service mesh uh, like ECO and security policy like NAT, firewall, etc., to enable cross cluster communication between the deployed applications or between a deployed application and the external service. Um, it supports multiple placement constraints such as affinity, anti affinity, platform capabilities, latency, and cost. Uh, it also provides application lifecycle management, including upgrade. Um, the comprehensive uh, status monitoring of these deployed uh, applications is also provided. Uh, it automatically enforces security isolation between the tenants mm -hmm. through the tenant authentication, authorization, RBAC, logical cloud concept. So basically, by using MCore, you have one uniform control and management plan to automatically deploy applications, network functions, security functions, and automatically set up the needed networking connection. So, but so MCO is primarily concerned with, uh, you know, managing and orchestrating the applications and the, and the network functions themselves, not the cluster underlying clusters, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. What's the, can you talk a little bit about the relationship between um, MCO and Kubernetes itself? I mean, it builds upon standard Kubernetes, right? Yes, right, exactly. So um, Kubernetes, you can think of Kubernetes orchestrates and schedules a workload onto a node. MCO orchestrates and schedules a workload onto a Kubernetes clusters. So it's one level. MCO operates at higher level than Kubernetes. It makes decision on which clusters, uh, which clusters or one or could be one or more clusters, a workload should run 
and then it interacts with the Kubernetes API server and hands over the workload to that Kubernetes control plan. So for that Kubernetes cluster control plan to schedule the workload to a specific node. Very good, thank you. Um, I want to come back to you, Robbie, because one of the things that I've heard is that, um, you know, with this sort of multi-cloud, multi-domain mech application environment, there are some, some challenges. Um, and maybe you could speak to some of the challenges uh, that uh, open source communities like MCO can, can focus on. Sure, Bob. So in my view, uh, there are four key areas that MCO can focus on. Number one, uh, typically, um, Arun uh, spoke about end-to-end -end solutions uh, uh, needed in the enterprise uh, use cases. Mm -hmm. So we need uh, a designer tool where uh, uh, you know uh, um, the services can be stitched together. The services can be uh, partner-provided services, and uh, it could be uh, make uh, uh, container applications and uh, uh, any other uh, network and network function uh, uh, services uh, must be stitched together. Uh, there's a need for a designer tool. And also uh, we need a way to manage the day to operations, which is uh, quite critical uh, when it comes to deployment and uh, provisioning. That's uh, one leg of the um, orchestration, uh, we also need uh, an ability so DevOps can come and uh, easily um, you know, integrate with this ecosystem and perform the day-to operations. So uh, number two, MCO can uh, look into securing the new type of this east-west traffic that I spoke about in the earlier use case, um, which is connecting the applications and services between clouds. So uh, we need a um, service mesh or enhance the Istio type of uh, service mesh. Uh, so there is a zero trust application access between these services. Number three, uh, to get a network awareness into the application uh, so that uh, we could do an intelligent uh, application placements. So there is a 5G um, uh, FF specifications uh, that many operators are building. It will be good if MCO can integrate with that spec and uh, get that network awareness in the application placement. Finally, the fourth one, uh, as uh, most of you are aware that Mac apps run in the carrier network. It means they're not accessible from public internet. So MCO uh, can work out on enhancing, uh, again, the Istio or any service mesh technologies so it can securely expose these MEC services over public internet. The need uh, is uh, for enabling the service to service communications uh, over public internet as well. Good, thank you for that. One thing I wanted to talk about where we're getting a little bit short on time um, is there, there was a, a lot of interest and a lot of input coming back to uh, to us at Intel about MCO and, and uh, wanting us to drive this into an open source community. And uh, so uh, we have actually done that. We've kicked off an, a, a, a new repo under the Linux Foundation for MCO. And uh, here are some of the participating companies. Of course, you, you all here are uh, representatives of some, three of the companies, uh, four of the companies here. Uh, but there are others as well. So we've got really good critical mass right out of the gate. Uh, you know, MCO has been around actually for about a year and a half. And again, a lot of interest and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, use cases and a lot of different assessments and, and uh, evaluations going on about its capabilities. So we're looking forward to a very robust, uh, you know, set of use cases and input and features on the roadmap. And um, you know the, you know the we, we meet on a weekly basis. There's a mailing list uh, that I'm going to talk about a little bit here. I'm going to move this out of the way so that people can share. One of the questions that will come up is, you know, how do we get involved uh, in MCO? And so uh, here on the screen is a link to where the wiki is for the MCO project, and uh, also a link to uh, the mailing list. And so, you know, one of the things that we're really looking forward to is, is getting more and more people with different use cases to come in and, and, and speak to and, and bring us more requirements and more use cases for multi-cluster orchestration. And of course, I mean, we all know that there's lots of 
this is a really important area uh, in the industry right now. And there's lots of solutions out there, albeit they're from particular cloud service providers or other vendors that are, uh, you know, sort of their solution for multi-cloud and tied to one particular vendor. So one of the things that we think is really powerful and what I heard when we were talking to people about open sourcing uh, the MCO project in the Linux Foundation was, it's really important to have, you know, an open, independent, collaborative environment, uh, community, a forum to drive these issues and pathfind uh, the, the capabilities that are, are needed uh, in multi-cluster orchestration. So MCO at the start is about, you know, Orchestra, it's about orchestration, but it's also about automation. It's about security, and it's about open collaboration from the stakeholders in the industry to to make something really powerful. So, we invite uh, folks to check us out on the wiki and come and join our mailing list. Come and join our meetings. All the information is there. They're open meetings, and anyone can participate. And uh, we want to drive drive this uh, um, this project forward and with, amongst the stakeholders. So. I wanna thank everybody for being on the panel today and we'll move to questions in a few moments. Thank you.